Hope you're doing good today. Today's video, I'm going to be covering a, a new book I just got. I'm always learning and researching. It takes more than love. This is actually a Christian view on adoption and they adopted transracially. Um, I'm not finished with this book yet, but I, I'm at a really good part in page 16 and I wanted to share. Um, it's about transracial adoption so i'm just going to start it's on page 16 it says parenting transracially does not come naturally nor does it just happen with time it is hard work and yet it's been one of the greatest blessings in our family life this was kind of uh, off to the side a side note now here's uh, a part from the book it says so after much praying and evaluation we decided to adopt domestically and open our home to a child of any ethnicity. And we decided that we would be committed to learning about whatever cultural and ethnic history our child would bring to our adopted, would bring to our family as we pressed into the adoption community. Looking back, this was a sweet and hard lesson as many of my presuppositions about the sweetness and inherent goodness of adoption were challenged. I read adoptees' perspective as well as birth parents' perspectives, and I quickly realized that I was only looking at adoption from my point in the adoption triad. Um, for example, birth parent, adoptee, adoptive parent, period. Yes, we were growing as a family, or we were growing our family, and yes, a child was gaining a new family, but that child had also lost something precious, their first family and culture. Yes, a birth mom was choosing a life for a child, but she was also choosing life without her child. And the more I listen, the more I learn, the more my heart was broken. When we walked through adoption the first time, I sat in a room holding a baby as another woman left the hospital with empty arms. I felt the just, I don't know this word, juxt, juxtaposition acutely. Um, yeah, if somebody can help me out with that, I'm gonna have to Google that one. Uh, joy and sorrow, loss and gain, broken and whole, grateful and devastated. This is, this is so relevant to how I, I have felt about adoption. It's, it's both, it's a loss and gain. It is loving my biological family while missing, I mean, loving my adoptive family while missing my biological family. And most people, if you bring up the loss, you're somehow being extremely ungrateful and I'm not, I'm being negative and and all this crazy stuff and like people love to come down hard on adoptees and you're just shamed into not talking and uh it's extremely hard and i i have a hard time making these videos because it's not fun to talk about the loss and focus on that maybe not so pretty part of adoption that is the loss and uh you know, if it's not acknowledged and validated, then there's gonna be other adoptees that are still out there and parents that are still out there that maybe have not been told everything from the social workers and the adoption agencies that, you know, there is trauma there. And if there isn't trauma, then this, this channel is not for you guys. Like if you need, if you don't need the help with uh, adoption trauma, then, you know, I, I I don't know how to help you because it just doesn't seem like you need help. Like if you don't have trauma, you don't really need to fix anything. So I, at least in my experience, I'm talking from my experience. I'm not speaking for anybody else other than myself and this book right now. Um, so yeah, the people on this channel I'm trying to help are the ones that are experiencing trauma that are lost confused, maybe stuck in the fog, they don't understand um, possibly the primal wound, uh, being separated from your biological mother, and race issues with transracial adoption, how important it is to 
connecting adoptee with their culture, their origins, and the, the best interest for the adoptee and what the true best interest for the adoptee really is. And a loving home um, is just, it's not, it's not the best interest. The best interest, it takes more than love. A loving home is, is the foundation, but the best interest is connecting them to the culture and their race and, um, and uh, trying to get a reunion or at least searching, allowing them to search uh, for the biological family if that's what they choose to do. I know that was extremely important for me. And I, I think, you know, as soon as possible, the reunion should start as soon as possible. The best interest for the child, I believe, is to be in contact with the biological family. It was for me and I wasn't allowed to get in touch with my biological family until I turned 18 and it happened to be really uh, age 21 which now looking back I felt sort of enslaved like it would have been better for my mental health if I was met with my uh, met with my biological family even though they're really messed up they're drug addicts um, not a healthy family I think it would have been beneficial to me to see that and be connected with them because I connected with my brother deeply 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 we had a very deep spiritual connection as a brother half brothers so yeah just quick video for today i hope this helps please have any questions you have if you're adopted parent um adoptee or looking to adopt um i'm still new at, at speaking about this because i've been silent for about 38 years of my life so you know it's the goal is to help so if i'm helping let me know. If I'm not helping, let me know. I'm open to all uh, negativity and positivity, but I'm not going to argue with anybody on this channel. Um, I'm just trying to help people. So hope you have a good day.